At least 2,000 homes in the Northern Rivers region have been declared uninhabitable due to flooding. The area is now faced with a homelessness crisis, as well as a clean-up of overwhelming proportions. As more ADF troops arrive to help, the scale of the destruction and the trauma suffered by residents is becoming clearer. As the clean-up ramps up, it's not enough for thousands of homes in Lismore to be deemed safe. Foundations might not have survived, houses might have moved. We just don't know and every home's going to have to be checked. To date already we've had about 3,500 inspections of, of flood damaged homes and around 2,000 of those already are not habitable, so they will need to be rebuilt. It's a further burden on a region with limited housing options. And those people need assistance. There's lots of help up there in relation to that assistance and we're helping those people finding houses that they can go to. Another 125 defence personnel left Brisbane for the region in four heavy lifting Chinook helicopters. The ADF is already helping the SES do rapid damage assessments. What's the situation? What's the damage to the building? What's the debris that needs to be cleared? What sort of efforts need to be done to get on with the recovery phase? But the Defence Force has also had to defend the timing of its support. I'm very sorry for all of those people who have felt that they haven't been supported and I, I empathise completely with their, their plight. It's not just homes that need to be rebuilt, but schools too. Thousands of children are off school this week as authorities scramble to find alternative sites. It's going to cost a fair bit of money to fix the damage and yeah, it's crazy how much a flood can do. It's heartbreaking to be honest. Uh, we have so many schools and classrooms that have been affected. We've had three schools fully inundated and uh, this school at St Carthage is where a number of classrooms have been affected. Bus companies that work with schools have also lost many of their vehicles to the floodwaters. It's also the condition of the roads now that's affected. That could be affected for 12, 18 months until they're repaired, so some kids won't even get in even if we are operating. And authorities had to deal with dangerously high ammonia levels at a flooded farm supplies business in South Lismore as if they didn't already have enough on their plate. Bronwyn Herbert, ABC News, Lismore. The devastation is widespread across the state's north. Just south of the Queensland border, the Mwilimba community feels abandoned. People there are asking authorities why there was no help when they needed it the most. As the floodwater rose across two states, Mwilimba local Brett Bug and his family realised it was time to get out. We've got some boys here come rescue us. <laughs> Say g'day boys. Yeah, They're rescuing us. We're out. It's nearly five o'clock. She's still coming up. Two heroes in high vis went from house to house, ferrying families to higher ground. They knew they didn't have any fuel, but they didn't go back. They just kept going and going and rescuing more people. Like hundreds of others, he says he owes his life to strangers. Now he wants to find them. I just want to say thanks. Like it, it's, it's, um, it's pretty emotional um, because, you know, we could have been stuck there all night in the cold and you didn't know how high the water's going to come. So, um, you know, they probably saved their lives and I know that they've saved heaps of other people's lives and they're just two blokes in a tinning. In the hours before they were rescued, he watched the water spill over the veranda, bringing an unsecured boat perilously close. Off, don't hit the house. Water crept up the windows and into the house. Yet as the water receded, the supermarket owner put off cleaning his own home to get the lifeblood of the community up and running. Uh, see what's here still. Um, our priority was, you know, not our house, we just walked away from the house. And so if we can get some supermarkets up, we can get people some food. Brett Bug called in favours to get fresh supplies for the hospital. Everyone banded together and, it, look, it was overwhelming. He said they had to because there was no support from authorities. Where were you? Just where were you? Like, when, when everyone needed you, where were you? The community now hopes that missing government support will be there during the extensive rebuild. Kathy Border, ABC News, Mwilimba. One of the many towns that will have to be rebuilt is Broadwater, south of Ballina. The small community has been cut off by floodwaters until recently. Rani Heyman visited Broadwater today. Rani, how are people there going? 
Juanita, residents are in shock and disbelief. Broadwater has been cut off by floodwaters for a week. And while people are now returning, they were physically unscathed through their evacuation there, but the mental toll of returning home is hitting hard. Joshua King is a man who bought a home in the town about 10 years ago, and he's just recently renovated it. He now has a completely devastated home and he doesn't know how he's going to get through the next couple of weeks or months. There are emergency service personnel there on the ground now, but he says it's strangers who have been pulling him through his time of need. It's amazing the community spirit. Everyone that's come out to our help that we didn't even know. And probably 30 people turn up this morning. Didn't know any of them. And they just helped us gut the whole place. But as we've heard throughout this entire flood crisis, Joshua King and other people in the community say more government funding is needed and fast to help them survive this.